Good afternoon, Prof. This is my video submission for the EpiPen case analysis. So I think this is a very interesting case because it's not just about pricing some ordinary object, but it involves a lot of ethical issues as well because the item in question is actually one that is of a matter of life and death, like the EpiPen. So Mylan, even though they technically are not a monopoly, they own majority of the market share and honestly they are sort of the the leader the monopoly in this market because um in the case it states that others are not as reliable in delivering the right dosage and doctors and nurses just have thought of you know epipen as the industry standard so they pretty much have all control in in this respect and with that comes a lot of power. They can decide whatever it is they want. And even though they blame it on other things, they actually do have a lot of say in a lot of decisions with relation to pricing. I think the root problem of this case would be how to price the EpiPen in a fair, a perceived fair way that ensures people get the medicine that they need. That they feel that, you know, the um, Myelin isn't just trying to rip them off and gain a lot of uh, money and profit from from their suffering but to price it in a way that people can live with and accept while still having um, a profit for Mylan. This is definitely the problem because the outrage it comes from lots of you know those heartfelt stories of people saying that um, this is life-changing life-saving medicine that I need and I feel like I can't afford it because the essence of it is that the EpiPen is not the most uh, compact item. It's not like it's small enough that you can just carry around on you everywhere you go that you wouldn't need multiple to stash in different places, but it's big and it's chunky. You can't really fit it into your pocket. Or, you know, you have to put it in your bag, but maybe the time to take it out of your bag would be too much for you to save your life. So people stash it everywhere and people are just like... Pe the, the consumers feel that um, Mylan is just off to make money out of this even though they say that um, a $600 two-pack saves you thousands of dollars from like as opposed to going to the ER but it's they still feel that it's unfair especially with the fact that there's price discrimination in the different countries that uh, the EpiPen is sold in. For example, in the US, it's 600 but in France, it's only 85 So they are... I, I think it come, they feel that um, Mylan is sort of playing God, in a sense, because they are the, the holders of this product and they can decide where to sell it, how much to sell it for, that maybe... Why is it that some of them get to pay, like it's unfair, they perceive it unfairly because why do other people in other countries get to pay less? Is it because their lives are more valuable than mine? It, it gives off that kind of message even though it, it um, they, they might not mean for it to. But then from the company's point of view, the discrimination is actually very ideal for them because they stand to gain more in terms of sales. Like they would, uh, the people, let's say they only want to pay $85 in the in France and maybe they have other ways of solving their anaphylaxis that uh, you know this price discrimination it serves well for uh, Mylan because they'd be able to capture as much of the profit as they can or as much of the sales as they can and while that is true for the company's point of view no consumer is going to be pleased to know that they pay less for the exact same good so the problem there lies is that if it was a normal consumer product that isn't a necessity, maybe the outrage wouldn't be so huge. But then the fact is that the EpiPen is the difference between life and death. And I, in class, we were discussing the extent of to which what something is life and death, like food perhaps. Food is also life and death, but food is... The thing is that the EpiPen is a monopoly. It's not like... Uh, when you have anaphylaxis, you have a range of options you can choose for. If a consumer is upset about, let's say, uh, a Coke being really expensive, they could always change to a different kind of soda or a different drink. But for anaphylaxis, I don't believe that the 
uh, other options are up to code for for solving their health issues that maybe the, the dosage isn't right or the um, the the, way, the method of delivery isn't safe like there were people that were doing um, homemade epinephrine delivery kits and stuff like that but definitely not as reliable as the EpiPen so the re that's why the outrage is there because if as a consumer if you're upset about something you can always change to a different product but in this case they don't have the choice and this is the one thing that they can rely on and people have known to rely on for a really long time to save their their lives so it is a product that determines the outcome of life and death so i i can understand i can empathize from where they would stand from of them being upset that it costs so much to like for some people they really just can't afford the six hundred dollars it's not just six hundred dollars if they need this and they have very severe allergy they're gonna need to stash the epipens in multiple locations they're gonna need to have a couple on hand so it could easily be you know a couple thousand dollars a year and for a person that can't afford it that's a lot of money and then at the end of it it might still expire if they don't use the epipen it's not like they can keep it for a couple of years to keep them you know to last but Yes, so I can understand why people will be upset because it just comes across that Mylan isn't sympathetic to their medical condition at all, but rather just trying to make money of it because they know that this is something that people need and this is something that um, at the end of it, no matter how high it is, people are still going to have to buy it. So who cares? And that's the image that Mylan gives off at the moment. So when the CEO was um, explaining the justifications for the price hike, it just came across uh, that they were blaming the healthcare system and the whole, oh, this, the supply chain, you know, they earn a cut at every point and um, it's out of our control. We only earn $274 out of the 600 So we're not earning all the 600 We don't take that much money and it... It just seems like they're being very negligent and they're not assuming their responsibility for their role in the whole game. Because as a big company, they definitely... And they produce so many uh, drugs in the US. Like uh, they were saying, the majority of the drugs are produced by Mylan. And they do definitely have a say in pricing and power in deciding pricing. So they just... I think as consumers, no one wants to hear Mylan blame it on R&D and because they have to make it accessible to the masses through education and you know uh, marketing that to make sure that people know what EpiPen is and how it can save their lives um, it's not what people care about it you can blame it all you want but people just want to know why some people are getting their EpiPens for cheaper and some are not so I think the issue of the perceived fairness is that they don't want to pay more than another country because Mylan is unwittingly sending the fact that some lives are more valuable than others. And the price is a direct barrier between the people getting the medicine that they need. And they just, they shouldn't be taking advantage of the situation just because they can. Or they shouldn't give off the image that they're taking advantage of the situation just because they can. So even though they released a cheaper generic version uh, at $300 for a two-pack as opposed to the $600, they already set the reference point at $600. So while it might seem like, oh, that's a great uh, half-off, you know, but it doesn't make much of a difference because th five, $300 is still a lot for uh, for a lot of consumers as opposed to in the past when it was less than 100 for a two-pack. And then you layer another issue on top of this is that Mylan, the thing that's protecting Mylan at the moment is their patent for the EpiPen that's going to last them into 2025. So they effectively have no uh, monopoly to raise the price as much as they'd like, which is exactly what they've done. So the slow FDA approvals for rival drugs also keep Mylan at the peak of the competition since it delays other uh, drugs to enter in the market. So technically, the Mylan can actually just keep their pricing as it is because people still have to buy the medicine for their allergies. It's not really a luxury. It's not a, a, like a want. I want a Coke. I want to go buy a Coke. It's a necessity if they want to live. So um, the pattern will keep them safe. And honestly, it doesn't spur them to innovate and improve 
the EpiPen to make it more uh, uh, accessible for like so, so that they could just have one on hand and never have to buy multiple ones and stash them around because I think if if you have this pattern to protect you why would you bother you know improving it and making it easier for people to just buy one as opposed to buying multiple why would they try and make it smaller more compact you know to keep it on like maybe a necklace or a keychain that they can carry around when the current thing is perfectly fine and people are going to have to buy multiple of them so it's very why would they fix something that isn't broke and that's the situation as it is so they could technically keep the price where it is and just deal with the the media firestorm you know with PR and just blaming it on other people but if they want to boost their shares and the image of their company they definitely should do something about it personally I think the price of the two pack definitely has to drop because eventually people if you raise it too high people are gonna try and find alternatives even if at the risk of their own health because they just can't afford it they would find alternatives to to solve their anaphylaxis and it will it will cause a, a loss in customers for myelin and also when 2025 comes even though that's eight years from the case uh the pattern protect protection will end and people are going to be able to encroach and make generic substitutes that will lower the prices anyway so the lowering in price is gonna come. It's it's a only like a matter of years. So I think it's best to start a strategy to lower the prices and gain the trust of customers again so that when 2025 comes and the generics are released, people will still stay loyal to the EpiPen. So it will maintain like a a price higher than what the generics will eventually cost. But even though it's more expensive, hopefully those that are loyal to the EpiPen will stay. So my idea is that it shouldn't be a cut off the bat, just like a slice and okay, yeah, now the EpiPen is $300. But because I think that it gives off a, a, the wrong message, you know, it's it could be in the form of a discount based on need rather than, okay, now this is cheap for everybody. But since they want to do price discrimination, perhaps they could do it in a more ethical way. So my idea is to make it sort of a wealth distribution kind of system where the rich will compensate more for the poor. Sort of like taxes, sort of like the CHAS system in Singapore. So they can sort uh, the, the patient's need for the EpiPen into tiers based on maybe their family income, the severity of the allergy, how often they purchase EpiPens, um, the people who need it the most, let's say the poorest people and the people who need, need it frequently with very, very serious allergies uh, would be in the priority and they would pay the least amount of money for it. And then the people with higher income would be paying the normal full retail price for it. So we have to frame it in a way that it's a discount for those who need it more. Like the chest cut system in Singapore. Because people... People acknowledge that, okay, these are the, the poor people, the people who need are in need, and they, they need assistance, financial assistance for, for their medication. So they, those who pay more, the people who go to private doctors, who do not have like, insurance to cover it, they pay out of their pocket, they can understand and they, don't, they, feel, they feel less perceived unfairness because um, you know, they can definitely afford it more. They will think in their heads, okay, I understand because... I am, um, I am luckier, I am more privileged than these people who need the assistance, so I think they wouldn't feel that it's so unjustified as compared to the poor people, you know. So those who, yeah, those, I think rolling out this kind of a pricing policy on top of a slight decrease in the original retail price to perhaps about $500 will be uh, effective to send out a message that Mylan isn't about profiting off uh, the needy, the people who really need this medicine, but, you know, they're trying to make a difference, they're trying to care and make sure that people get the medicine that they need. I think that Mylan, on top of these, the changes in the pricing policy, they can roll out um, a sort of PR 
stand a sort of PR fix at least for the the blast of media coming at them. Um, it was mentioned in the exhibit one of the case that people were upset that they would have to trade in, um, as in they would have to throw away their uh, EpiPens, the expired ones, after a year. And I can imagine it's very frustrating because if you pay $600 for a two-pack and you don't get to use it, you just have to throw it away after one year. It's not a very long shelf life, so it would just feel like you threw, threw uh, $600 away and it's not like you can just stab yourself with the EpiPen and feel satisfied that you used it because you wouldn't need the epinephrine in you anyway. So I think what um, Mylan can do is do some uh, a sort of trade-in policy for to trade in expiring uh, EpiPens for new ones. So for example, if let's say the limit was three months left on the, the EpiPen, a three-month shelf life remaining, uh, people can trade in these EpiPens and they would get uh, replacement ones from Myelin. And the expiring ones can actually, I'm, I'm thinking either be resold at a much lower price to, as long as it's not been touched and opened of course, uh, to uh, places that need them or be donated even for free to let's say uh, critical areas in need out of goodwill. So for example, uh, free clinics that treat uh, needy patients, uh, let's say non-profits, uh, schools, maybe even restaurants, like put them in areas that people are most likely going to use them. So restaurants, partner up with restaurants that, you know, serve a lot of peanuts and allergy inducing foods to have them on stock, like give out of goodwill so that people can see Mylan is making an effort to making EpiPens available. Um, in their area so that in the event some they didn't have an EpiPen on them and the allergy strikes, they could rely on the communal area to provide an EpiPen. So I that logic behind this is that the EpiPens are going to be wasted anyway. They're likely going to be thrown away and that's just a waste because it could have gone to someone that probably needed it. So you might as well give them to the places that do need it. And um, reselling might come off a bit profit-minded. Uh, profit like people, they're, they're just trying to make an, find another way to make a quick buck. But perhaps I think donating would be a better idea to, you know, show that they do work with some non-profit, some char uh, do some charitable work with their, their medicine. So taking all these into consideration, where with the lowering of the prices, tearing people into different areas based on their need for uh, a cheaper EpiPen and giving back to the community, I think this is a good first step to make sure that people start trusting Mylan again as an entity that cares about patients, about their consumers, and it's not just trying to make a big buck out of it. And I think with these changes, when 2025 comes, people will be more inclined to stay loyal to EpiPen as opposed to switching to a generic that may not be as efficient. Thank you.